Hello, my name is Molly Carl. Nice to meet you. And uh, 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 I just saw something that I didn't saw last episode because I didn't saw it. Look, behind us is freaking Hamel. That I'm stupid. <laughs> it's the castle. <laughs> And the background has a change, and I'll be that way. Um, and of course, uh, we don't even need to guess that we are going to Hamel there. Uh, because, because everybody's going there. Alright, time to side quest that are always important. Uh, let's get out of here. I talk to everybody. As always, I want to know about their lives. Okay, we got one here. Yes. And I checked all the shop. I did bought the presents that were available. Ha. Oh, you're here to buy something? I got this car case in this morning. It's a bit warm, but real cool looking. Wanna buy it? <laughs> a car case? Yeah. You know, for playing cards. It's made of military grade bulletproof material. With a case like this, you can even play cards on the bar. Um, is that really necessary? Anyway, it's first time come, first serve it. How about it? You want it? Alright, you drive a hard bargain, I'll take it. <laughs> thanks. Uh, this is pretty stylish looking. Oh, looks like there is already some cards inside. Oops, I never checked inside. Let me see. Oh, these are what you call antique cards. They're probably from about 100 years ago. Looks like it's a full 36 card set. Is that a clue? Does I find clue about the past there? <laughs> well, shoot. Had I know early, I would charge more. Oh well, if that's the case, I'll give this back. Nah, don't worry about it. I already sold it to ya. I just gotta chalk this up to me needed for more training. Though, I feel like there was someone on the branch campus who was looking for some cars like this. Was it Stark? I feel like he said he was looking for a deck for an often tweak cards. I think I remember him mentioning 36 cars too. Does that number mean something now? <laughs> oh well, those are now. You can do what you want with them. Be sure to take care of them. <laughs> Thanks. Of course. You do an optional quest, expending money to your solo gift. I got some good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, girl. You Come got on, it. buy some more. I got some good stuff. Guess that why I'm <laughs> Come on, buy some more. Wanna buy something? No. Hmm? Done already? Yes. Uh Stark. Must be here. <clears throat> I suppose there's another play. Yeah. Stark! I got the present. Just tell me where you and I give it to you. The hell? Second floor. Okay. You making this difficult, Stark? There you go. Stark. Hi! Why is not Freddy? The pawn shop is Hamel or didn't have anything. Ah, this is going to be impossible to find, isn't it? Check into or the orbital net, huh? Are you still looking for those cars you were talking about before? It's Dr. Rin. Yes, but no matter where I look, I can find them. It's true, they are old, but it's not like they are so stupidly rare or anything like that. I see. That deck of, of cards I bought is a long shot, but maybe I'll show them to Stark. Yeah, <laughs> the hell. There is something I'd like you to take a look at. This won't happen to be what you're looking for, will it? A car case. What's so special about it? Check inside. What's inside? 
Th these are it, it really is them. This is a set of the antique cars I've been looking for. But not just that, this scratch and creases. <laughs> this is the exact deck I lost. The exact deck? Yeah, these cars were my treasure. They were given to me by a guy I really looked up to. Huh. But one day my dad sold them to a pawn shop thinking they were his. Oh, sure, so that's what happened. I'm pretty stupid, right? I just take better care of this, it never will happen. Seeing this again remind me of those days in July. Huh. He was 4 years older than me. Strong, smart, cunning. Huh. I can't even count how many times he fooled me with his cards. Ha huh, ha. Huh. He must have him be quite a trickster. Is he still in July? No, in the Civil War last year he... Ha 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 ha! I see, sorry. From July, four years older. Are you stupid, Rain? <laughs> but all that aside, where did you even find this deck anyway? At Nave Valley. I was there earlier and had the car case recommended to me. Well, I look inside, there was a deck of cars sitting in there. I'm guessing the previous owner sold the case with the deck is still inside. I see, so the cars were hidden in there. Maybe that explains why I had such a hard time finding them. Well, all's well that ends well, but you finally found them again. You should keep a close eye on those, Stark. May as well keep the case too. What? Huh? But uh, I, I can just take this. <laughs> Why not? You say yourself, those cars are your treasure, right? Of course I'm happy to have them again, but I can't just accept them like this. Give me money. No, no, that's too much, I, I like you. <laughs> I'm not that desperate to break a friendship. This is all the money I set aside to buy the deck if I ever found it. Just in case someone else got it before I cool. Please accept this along with my thanks. Um. Imagine that! <laughs> I know I'm poor, but... Sorry, I can accept that. How about this? Let's make a little wager. A, a wager? Yeah, I'm going to throw... <gasps> oh, Reed! Oh my god, Reed! You just have to guess which one. Oh my god. Wow. If you guess wrong, you keep all that money of yours. That sounds pretty interesting. Alright, I accept. But I guess right, you have to accept all that Mira. Deal. Here we go. How are they gonna show me? God damn it. Okay, at least the hands. Were you paying attention? Which hands is the coin? Of course, it's Crow he's talking about, so Crow, of course, ha had many times done that, so he must answer, know the answer. Let's see. This was his favorite trick. Sorcerer Rain's probably testing me to see if I know it. Seeing that coin fall down below was proof. So the correct answer is... God, now... <laughs> <laughs> nice try, but it's not in either hand, is it? That's your guess? Let's check that. Well, the right hand's empty. What about the other left? Oh! <laughs> I already knew that he would. Uh... <laughs> you look surprised. You knew the trick, so you thought you knew the answer. <laughs> I see. You pulled a fast one on me. You had two coins, then you let one drop and kept the other in your left hand. Yep, that's exactly... <laughs> You're pretty good, Instructor Ring. You may even be... <sighs> well, I don't know if I got that far. I had a feeling you knew, Kuro. 
you must have really looked up to him back in July. Well, yeah, he really told me a lot. But I haven't talked to him since he left July. That long, huh? He was around 13 when he left, right? It was right after the former mayor, his grandfather, died. Everyone looked up to him. I was only 8 when it happened, so I didn't really understand the situation back then. This day I still regret that I wasn't able to say goodbye to him. I have just been chasing his shadow since then. During the Civil War, I hear rumors of the Ashur Chevalier, and I thought, maybe... But by the time I finally figured out his identity, Crow had already... Well, I'm sure you know. Yeah. But, wow, it's pretty incredible you were able to find that much out on your own. Thanks, I guess you could say Crow told me well. Initially, I ended up deciding to come to the branch campus because I'd hear you'd be here. If you got a chance sometime, I'd love to hear more about Crown from you. He was really always a coward. Yeah, I just say it. Still, I never could have guessed that's what brought you to this school. In any case, I'm interested in hearing about what Carl was like when he was younger. So let's meet up sometimes and swap stories. Yeah, I've been looking forward to it. I'll never lose this tech again, I swear it. Thank you so much, instructor. <laughs> no problem at all. They're preparing something. That musket man, there's no way it could be Crow. <laughs> I mean... It must be more complicated than that. Unless the game is foolish in me and it's like, ha, ah, not him. What would have happened if when I talk about Crow? God damn it. Let's talk about Crow now. Wait. I think the, the last one is on leaves. Yes, leaves. Here we are. I think it was the radio station. If I'm not wrong. Yes. That's yes, right. Oh, Rin, did Celestine contact you? Yeah, did you have some trouble with the radio show? Yeah, it's a pretty long story though, and I hate to keep you your time. I won't bother you with it if you are busy right now. He seems pretty worried. Maybe I can at least hear him out. Well, for the time being, can you just tell me the story? You say something about appearing on a radio program. <laughs> yeah. Rin, do you know Radio 3's early morning radio drama? Oh, I didn't know you guys were running a radio drama. I would hear that you were working on a short drama, but... I ate train in the morning, so I never hear it. I see, that may actually be for the better. <laughs> huh? <clears throat> the show is an adventure drama called Eternal New. It's starring the spring and it's really been catching steam with the listener. And during the summer festival in the capital, we are going to do a special show during the prime time. I see, I never hear of it, but it sounds interesting. So what's the problem? Well... We have some issues with the protagonist and the heroine. We heard uh, two actors from a theater company, but both of them came down with food poisoning. <laughs> what? I see, food spoils faster this time of year. I guess they had bad luck. Wait, are you asking? Yep, I'm asking you to play the protagonist. Oh my god. Uh, no, 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 no way. I, ca I can't do that. I never act in my life, the fans are going to do to be fierce. Well, the saving grace here is that your voice is really similar to his. It's known here of this industry and I'll do everything I can to help you. And most importantly, I think you feel the protagonist role perfectly. Even if that is true. 
Didn't you say the heroine got food poisoning too? Well, yes. The way the show works, the heroine change every episode. A few scripts are all ready to go, so I think we can make this work. So I have a few people in mind that we both know. I was hoping you may be able to convince one of them. Uh, it was nice to know in you. <laughs> hey, wait! Like I said, this show's finally picking up steam. I don't want it to end like this. I've been working on this story ever since our school days. It's my precious baby. And just like with Aventime, I want nothing but quality entertainment for our listeners. Ah. This is out of the blue, but I feel sorry for him. <laughs> it's gonna be hard asking someone we know to play the heroine. Okay, I don't know what I can do, but I'll try my best. Thanks, Rin. I don't even know how to begin to thank you. We don't have much time, right? Come on, let's get started. So, who do you think would be good for the heroine role? Oh yeah. So first of all, the drama is set in a fictional kingdom located in the center of the continent. The main character name is Neon. He is a skilled agent who carries out secret orders from the second born prince. <laughs> He's got quite an interesting background. White hair, black coat, at his hip is the chosen blade, a type of easter sword known as a katana. I don't even know where to start with this main character. So for the heroine, I'm thinking. A petite, troublemaking engineer named Femi. Or a female merchant with an accent named Bertha, who does up against big companies. Or a plucky med student named Nani, who works at a big hospital that was taken over a farm. Oh my god. <laughs> or a sister named Rhys, who is part of the Charles Secret Order of Knights. Those are the heroines for the script that are ready to go. Okay, I know who you have in mind. Min for the engineer, Becky for the merchant, Lindy for the med student, Arusin for the sister. Yeah, so I want you to ask one of them to play the part of the heroine. I'll let you decide who you want to go with. Okay, I don't have much time, so I go as around. You need to prepare for the recording, right? Go ahead and do that for the time being. Alright, got it. I know who I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask Rosine, because Thomas is in this chapter. <laughs> Excuse me. Where are you? Rosine? Maybe Thomas will hear Rosine's voice and will trigger something. <laughs> What's wrong, Rosine? It looks like something boring to you. I need you to show your identity. The heroine role. Actually, Mon had a request for me. Since I have duties in the morning, I do listen to that show. But even so, I think it's just a coincidence that it's about the secret knights of the church. I think, what was it? Red Moon of Rosie? That had a similar storyline. I hear the church allow it as a diversion. In any case, I understand. I'll ask permission from my superior. It's approved. I'll do it. Thanks. Her superior. Is she talking about who I think she talking about? I did a good choice. Remember, this is pre-recorded, so yeah. Like, in case you guys tell me to choose her, I choose her from the heart. Okay, next is the climatic scene in the old castle at night. Rhys, as a knight of the church, is trying to prevent the demon that was sealed away during the Dark Age from reviving. <laughs> Though you and Neom have been at odds up till now, you join forces to defeat the demon. I'll let you two figure out how you want to do this. It's up to us, Rosine, you got this? 
<laughs> let our imagination run wild. I'll use my crossbow to draw the art. Crossbow? God damn it, like Kevin. Now use that opening too. No, that's my job. I'll draw their attention. <laughs> Just listen to me. <laughs> no, you listen to me. <laughs> this is the final. The demon has words. <laughs> they use their secret skill and spell to seal the demon away, but Reese becomes possessed. The rice calls out to Naum, telling him to kill her while the demon is trapped inside her. This is just a coincidence, it's really too real. This sounds this also sound like Phantasma, you know. I better con con concentrate on the show if I were the heroine. With a smile, tell Nell to kill. She smile. I have decided my blow and body to the salt of the goodness. It's an honor to take evil down with me, so please. The girls three there, if the rumors I hear were true. No, I need to concentrate if I were in this situation. We pray we provoke her. What do you mean provoke her? Why would I want to provoke her? It's because they got another traduction. I know at the end of 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 Sky 3 they kill them, but Kevin killed it with rice together. I'm disappointed. Were the rumors about the night of the church false? Are you going to give up now and forsake all the lives you could save in the future? That's right, I'm uncut. What? That was amazing, Rosine. Your smile almost felt too genuine. But Rin, instead of getting mad, why don't you try provoking her instead? Yeah, that may work a little better. I wasn't mad. This is so dramatic. That wasn't dra mad. I, I didn't want to provoke her. That line was good. Thank you both so much. We're gonna start editing it now, but I think it's going to turn out as great as the other episodes. <laughs> I'm not sure we'll match up to the real thing. To be honest, I had reservation at first, but fiction can be fun. Good to hear it. I thought the scenario was so far from reality, I get in trouble with the Septian Church, but... I figure since Red Moon Rose set the precedent, it was okay to do this. I see, far from reality, huh? Anyway, it was no coincidence you asked us to play this character, huh? <laughs> uh, the way they spoke was very similar to us. Though some of the details were a little different. <laughs> well... You're exactly right. I described your mannerisms to the script written while adding a splash of flavor. I just thought modeling in the main character after you two will make a really good story. I figured that was the case. I believe I have to let my higher ups know about this drama. I was thinking about telling my students about it, but it may be a little too mature for them. <laughs> yeah, but it may be good for your older students at least. Ooh! I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna equip it before we go into the, to, to the thing. I think that's it. Oh no. Michael, how are you doing? Mayor Mervin, it's rare of you to take a break. <laughs> Despite what you may think of me, I do take breaks, Schweizer. It's my first time here, but I'm impressed by the selection. I won't mind frequenting Hit This Cafe. <laughs> Randy mentioned it too, but Mayor Irvin has really sucked up. You're still a killjoy. Oh, welcome, Instructor. Did you come here for my request, perhaps? That's right, your breed is great too, but I just came to help out. You want me to look for something? 
Yes, but it's personal. I'm so sorry for bringing you out here for this. It may be a little harder than you expect. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I just killed a lot of Boros. Okay, not really. Okay. Gaff, Gaff. Are you aware that I'm not from Leaf's area? Oh my god, spy. I actually only moved here last year. By the coincidence. Spy. Yeah, I hear. But in that time, your store was gotten so popular, people were coming here all the way from the capital. Fortunately, yes. But I actually came here once before, two years ago. I really fell in love with he this town and decided to open my shop here with him. Him? So you came here on vacation with your boyfriend? And well, he was my lover and my fiancé. Oh, I see. I never knew that she had a fiancé. Fiancé. Wait, aren't you running this place on your own? Yes. We promise that we will open the store together. Want to get like that? <laughs> but to, okay, I won't do that. But <laughs> due to certain circumstances, I came here by myself to get the business rolling. Recently, though, I received a strange letter from him. He sent me a grand opening gift. But I need to solve the riddle he gave me in order to find it. The riddle, you say? That is interesting. He can be too playful sometimes. It's not urgent, but if you could help me. A gift from here, fiance. I don't blame her for being bothered by it. <laughs> it probably won't be a ring, will it? Yes, if you don't mind, I'd love to help you. Thank goodness, it's been bothering me for a while. Now then, would you mind taking a look at the letter? Certainly. <laughs> Dear Lisa, you have opened the baker by now. I'm sure your days are filled with work and worry, but when you have a spare moment I'd like you to follow these clues. The secret words we left behind at the place where travels first stop, there should be able to find my gift. The station? I don't know. I see, it's some kind of puzzle. The place where travelers first stop. The first place a tourist visit is... Ah! Okay, when they're stopped already. <laughs> do you wanna... Do you have any ideas what he means? Yeah, I think I do. The phone? Your gift should be waiting at the very end. I'll let you know when I find it. Very well, I'm sorry for putting a personal trouble like this on you. But thank you, instructor. I, I don't want to see the, the map, but I think... When... Will they go to the... Will they go... I don't think they will go there. I mean, first stop, you're gonna see the fountain. Never mind, there is no mark on the fountain. Well, it depends, you are like... Ah, it's the station, okay. When they first stop, I did say station. Part of the riddle where travelers first stop. The first place in town someone will end up will definitely be leave station. I was no ex exception. I went through here too. The first time I came to leaves. Time sure does fly. The secret wars we left behind at the place where traveler first stop. The next part. Guess I'll have a look around. Hmm. There is letters. And there is a map. Oh my god, there is the mark. Okay, damn it, that's it. <laughs> memories notebook. Please use to record the memories of your trip. This is a notebook for visitors to read their thoughts and memories in. Secret wars we left behind. I wonder if Lisa wrote anything in it. That would have been two years ago. <laughs> Here we go. He took a day off. <clears throat> he took a day off so we could come to the tree. Leaves is such an adorable little town. Our dream is to open a bakery, like I thought, 
Small towns like this are better fed for... Okay, poor Julian. <laughs> well, also have to go visit the house of the Shining Cop together. She did say yes. After all, that's a pretty smart there. No need to be shy, Lisa. I'm not. I'm not sure if... Sure, I get that they were talking about, but it's clear they were enjoying themselves. This part sticks out to me. It's be what the letter was talking about. The house of the Shining Cop. Where it leaves, could that be? Maybe I'll check there. The bar? I think it's the bar. I think there's a cop. Where's the bar? I mean... Oh no, wait. Oh no. Those are cards. Ah, shine. Oh my god. I'm stupid. This cop. Was it like cup of drinking? I'm stupid. Where luckily there, there is that. The house of shining cop. Father Henry may know something. Oh, can I help you with something? I'd like to ask you a question. Do you happen to remember two travelers coming by here from the capital about two years ago? They were a couple. I'm sure you have seen quite a few people that may match that description. Actually, I believe I know who it is you're referring to. They came to enjoy a tour of the church together. The two of them were so in love, I couldn't possibly have forgotten. The two had recently got engaged. If I remember correctly, the name's man is Julian. They consult me about potentially having their wedding here. I see, so that's what the note meant by her saying yes. You may already know, but that woman was Lisa, the bakery owner. She still comes around from time to time. Yeah, turns out she fell in love with Leaves and ended up moving here. Unfortunately, Liz Julian hasn't come yet. Huh. Father? Sorry, it's nothing. I just remember that Yula left me a letter. He told me that someday someone will come here asking me about the two of them. Wow. Do you want to me? Yes. Well, I don't know if I am worthy of receiving it, but... You should be fine. It's what he requested. Besides, you have been helping Lisa out, haven't you? Alright, I'll take it. Thank you. Here it is. Now, let's see here. Lisa, there is one thing I know for sure. We will move to this town someday. So until then, I'll leave this gift with the keeper who watched from the hill. I hope this happiness lasts forever. Oh. This is... He left the gift somewhere. Does that mean it's been somewhere in Lisa for two years? That's pretty surprising. I hope this happiness lasts forever. Isn't the kind of message you leave with just any gift? Did you discover something? Yes, I think I have a good idea. I should look into this. The keeper who watched from the hill. If it leaves the hill properly refers to... Will it be one spot? <laughs> oh my god. Hills, hill... Wait, the rooftop of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, where I study, is, is that there? I got a feeling it's there. No, no, where? Wait, <laughs> where is my academy? This way. No, oh, god damn it. This way. The hills, I should pull. Right? I don't want to go for nothing. Yes. The rooftop. No? It's not here? God damn it, it's down there. I saw the green dot. Ah, the garden! Oh my god. Well, you can see the garden from here. You can see the hills from here. You should have been here. <laughs> There's a glitch. I don't understand English, that's it. 
low. Apparently there is a small here here before the branch campus was built. Oh, I will know that. I don't know. The keeper who watched from the hill. Ah, the keeper. Oh, god damn it. Will it mean the tall tree here? Okay, I'll check it out. I didn't expect to find something like this here. The Julius guy seemed like quite an interesting person. Anyway, now that I got, I, I should tell Blaze Oh my, so this is where it's been all this time. But why will he do something so road about like this? Huh? Would you care to do the honors, Lisa? Oh yes, well then... Lisa? Oh, it's nothing, I was just thinking about how long it's been since back then. Beautiful wrap out bottle and a letter. To my beloved Lisa, by the time you read this, you may already have opened up your bakery. If so, then I'd like you to congratulate you. Your hard work has been the dream we share has gone through at long last. I wish you all the blessing in the world. But the fact that you found this means I must no longer be there by your side. It seems I left you all alone, and for that I'm so deeply sorry, my love. I swore to always make you happy, and I'd be proud to uphold that promise my whole life. But I worry that in my absence your beautiful smile has been exchanged for tears. This may not be enough to atone for breaking my promise, but I have included her seed with this letter. I got them during my last post. They were supposed to be pretty good, full of nutrients with a distinct flavor. I know they will go perfectly with your delicious bread. I hope my, wor my worry proves to be nothing, and that your smile, that beautiful smile of yours, I should live out our dream. My eternal love to you, Julian. Julian, so this is what you left me, this is so very like you, I had been wondering but, did Julian, I'm sorry instructor, I should have kept it from you, Julian was a very kind and smart, but he was born into a poor family, in order to get a scholarship he had to enroll in a military academy out in the countryside, after he graduated he said he had to give back so he enlisted in the military. He planned to retire from the military after two years, and in them we opened the bakery together. No way. But one day he was called to active duty and never returned. It's already been a year and a half since then. So he did pass away, and in the civil war too. After I lost him, I did, oh my god, uh. <clears throat> For a whole year afterwards, it felt as though my very soul had been ripped out. Even after that, it was too painful to live alone, no mess and open a bakery. But somehow it felt as though I broke a promise to him, I felt so guilty. But seeing this, it seemed like he already forgave me. Yeah, it's clear to me that Julian genuinely wished for your happiness. And as a soldier, he knew something may happen to him, so he buried this letter for you to find. He worried that you may end up losing your way. So he wanted to make sure you opened the bakery you had planned to. Huh? I don't know what that for sure, but I feel like that's the message these harpoon seeds are meant to convey. I see. The first letter I show you was sent by his family, they found it while going through his things. It was as though he'd written the letter himself only the other day. It seemed like he just knew I had opened a bakery, I found myself wondering how he could have known. But I think I was finally able to receive his last wish from him. Thank you so much for finding this for me. And please come visit our bakery anytime. Lisa, of course I will. You can count on me as one of your regulars. We got money. Oh, that was cute. That was so cool. All right, 
we're gonna let it till here. I guess today, today I go to the Kipa, like on my own. Oh my god, you're the only one that is growing. I don't know if there's something else that, that can, that can... We're gonna have the best garden. <laughs> so guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. If you guys want, I'm... I lose myself in